on cold winter days. Baseball never seems further away. But in Sleepy Eye, one game is always held close. This is probably the most well-known photo in Sleepy Eye history. This is the biggest thing that ever happened here. For Scott Supernot, Dean Brinkman, and Randy Krismerzik, the obsession... I would say that <laughs> <laughs> ...took root. Says he went two for three in here. ...before they were born. The Sultan of Swat. Babe Ruth was already an icon when somehow local boosters and baseball crazy Sleepy Eye convinced him to play an off-season exhibition here. He was the biggest star on the biggest stage. Randy has researched. Some places I see reference to a dance uptown. Every nuance of that October 1922 day. And when the large frame Ruth stepped off the train. The babe's brief stay at the Berg Hotel. The banquet he attended at St. Mary's School and his departure from the very depot where they now ruminate. What did it say in his second at bat? Over a game played 94 years ago with a team of local all-stars, Babe Ruth and his Yankees teammate on the left, Bob Musel. I think what's neat is we've got one photo and the stories that that one photo is telling. One photo with many faces. This is John Cutting. Some still alive in Sleepy Eye to share their stories. That's Ed Berkner. Till the years took their toll. And in 2011. So that's little Spin right there. Spin Schrepfer at 99 was the last to go. And then at that point, you think they're all gone? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, from seemingly out of nowhere, <laughs> a message arrived from five hours away. Well, I know I've heard the story from my grandpa multiple times and it always fascinated me. Joel Youngman grew up listening to his grandpa's boyhood stories from Sleepy Eye. He would talk and talk about it. Then Joel. I think you'll be interested to hear this. Dropped a bombshell. I screamed at my wife. That long unidentified tyke in the cap. It's the little boy peeking out. <laughs> was Len Youngman, Joel's grandpa. I never got tired of hearing it. And get this. Yeah, this is. This is special. Grandpa had written, this ball was hit for a home run. Joel had Babe Ruth's home run ball. In Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, October 16th, 1922. He also still had <laughs> the grandpa. I'm 104. Who gave it to him? I'll be 105 in March. So what do you think happens next? Something telling us we got to go up there. This is a spiritual journey. Of course, they all wonder. Will Len still be sharp? That's where I'm going somewhere. But a man doesn't forget playing with his childhood friends beyond the outfield fence when. And here comes this baseball flying way over the center fielder's head. He didn't even chase it. Came right to me. I picked it up and ran with it. <laughs> well, we made it, guys. Nor will three men fresh from a five hour drive. Well, Len! Ever forget this. Len! How are you? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Good to see you. Where in the hell are you from? <laughs> I like that. I can't imagine anybody coming this far just to throw the damn baseball. <laughs> this was, of course, never about the ball. So this is a 1908 team. I know them all. But rather the next five hours they will spend talking hometowns. He was a harness maker. And baseball. But he doesn't have a Babe Ruth ball. No, you don't. <laughs> Connections. He will always be baseball's great man. Past to present. Young to old. <laughs> Winter to spring. Boyd Hooper, Carol Evan News, Sleepy Eye.